everybody, Ben Offit here, CEO and founder of Offit Advisors. And today I just wanna share some perspective on the market and the S&P 500. And with the S&P 500 being the top performer so far this year and last year, uh, some, some people might be asking, why don't I just have all my portfolio in that? Well, here's four reasons why you shouldn't do that. Number one, don't chase performance and try to time the market. We want to resist the temptation of moving into the top performer, moving out of what isn't the top performer. It's not about timing the market, it's about time in the market. And there's a risk that if you move into the S&P 500 fully now and then get out later, you'd be buying high and selling low. And we don't wanna do that, we wanna uh, buy low and sell high. So it's really not about having the top performer always, it's about having the appropriate investment mix in your portfolio, and having a plan and the discipline to stick with it. Number two, diversification means that you're always gonna have the top performer and the bottom performer. So if you have the S&P 500 at the top right now, you'll also have real estate and international emerging markets maybe at the bottom. And that's okay because the winners and the losers rotate. And the best performer this year could be the worst next year. And the worst performer this year could be the best next year. And so it's important to have a diversified portfolio. Um, if you think about what the S&P 500 did from 2000 to 2010, it actually performed zero. And if you don't diversify, you could be subject to that same potential risk in the future. The third thing is it's natural for Americans to have home bias. Canadians have home bias. Swedish people have home bias, and they're more likely to have their home country in their portfolio, and that's natural. But there's some risk in that. An example of that is the Japanese stock market, which reached its peak in December of 1989 and still has not fully returned to that peak 35 years later. So Japanese investors that only invested in their home country really have missed out on a lot of performance over time, and that's a big risk to only investing in your home country. So we wanna invest globally. Uh, the final thing that I would say is it's important to diversify and not concentrate. An example of this would be investing only in NVIDIA stock. That could be a natural question to ask, or, or Apple stock for that matter. Uh, those have done over 350% in return uh, in the past year or so. Uh, way higher than the S&P 500. But the fact is that stocks uh, also don't stay at the top always. So it's important to diversify and not concentrate. Um, if you had only invested in certain companies of the past uh, that were in the top, for example, like Blockbuster, those companies don't even exist nowadays. So if you're only investing in single companies, uh, there's a risk in that. So uh, that also equates to how you look at the S&P 500. So we're here to help. Uh, we're here to make sense of all of this and answer your questions. Um, it's really about diversification, having a long-term plan, sticking with it, and uh, having a financial advisor by your side uh, to help make sure you're making the right decisions now and into the future. So uh, let us know if you have any questions and hope this was helpful. Thank you.